Hey folks, it's Brian here and it's time for another video on my Jeep TJ build series. Uh, this is Jeep 86 and today I'm going to replace the shocks. Uh, when I bought this Jeep, it was a total loss at Copart and it was in a salvage auction. Um, I've put it back together and got it running on the road and I'm just wrapping up a few details that uh, affect the livability of it or drivability of it. So one of the issues, it had a two and a half inch Rough Country lift kit on it and um, it looks like the shocks are just shot, you know? So I'm gonna put some Rancho 5000 X series shocks on it uh, and that's what today's project is. So let's get started. Um, I've got the shocks over here, so I'll get those out. Uh, in fact, let me, uh, let me work on that right now. Oops, right back. All right, so I thought I was missing one of these, but it turned out it was stuck in the box. So, I've got four dust covers. And I'm not going to play with all four of them at once. Um, so, it was really interesting. I guess um, when Rock Auto says that it's a supplier closeout, what they really mean is it's a unit that's been out and was returned and is still sellable. Whatever. I don't care. I got a really good deal on these. I got all four of them with shipping, with tax for $175. That was dirt cheap. Um, local auto parts place wanted like $100 a piece for them. I don't see how those people stay in fucking business. So anyway, these are the rear ones. And these are the front ones. And uh, I'm going to start on the front. Just because. So... Uh, set those where they won't fall that way I can be really lazy I guess we'll start over here as we've got more room so uh, I'm gonna crank the wheel uh, so that I have uh, more room I guess I need a key to do that so let me go get my keys and uh, I'm gonna crank the wheel and then we're gonna get busy with this okay so this is not a difficult project um, if you are um, moderately mechanically inclined you can do this there's two bolts down here and one nut up here this is a 14 millimeter these are 13 millimeter on top and on the bottom and um, you're going to need um, a ratchet wrench is ideal but you can use just a plain wrench it'll just take longer same thing you're going to need a 13 millimeter box wrench the ratchet size probably not going to do you a lot of good and then you're going to need a ratchet driver and you could do it with a pair of 13 millimeter wrenches but again it's just going to take longer so let me find a place to put the camera and i'm going to undo the top first Again, this is a 14 millimeter. You do not need to jack the vehicle up. The vehicle is not going to fall on you. Um, you just need to loosen, actually remove this nut. Oh, and it's turning, so you'll need to stop that. And in this case, these are going out, so I don't need I don't need anything magical. And so I'm just going to use a pair of, of uh, pliers to grab these.
Well, that's bizarre. Normally they don't do this. Um, So the other thing you can do is put a wrench up there. That is what that's for. undo itself at this point. My fingers are a little weak, so I'm going to use the ratchet. take the rubber bushing out. These are not going to get reused. So next we need to do the other one. And I'm going to reposition everything including me. All right, so I'm going to do the hard one first, which is the one that is closest to the axle. need the extension. It's easier without the extension. Oh yes you will need the extension because you can't get in there without it. Again, these are not going to get reused, so um, you're just hanging on to them for for uh, general sanitation reasons. Let's see if I can get this one in here without the extension. My hands hurt um, when I use them for a long period of time like this. All right, so at this point, the uh, shock is just sitting here.
So let's collect the hardware and let's get it out of here. So all you need to do is push up on this to get it out. Of course, now this one has more force, so I'll do this from underneath. And that's just a laziness thing. Okay, so let's talk about setup a little bit. You slide this over, you put one bushing and one um, washer on here. These aren't under a tremendous amount of pressure. The job of a shock is to resist rapid movement, not to support the vehicle. So you're gonna compress it all the way down like this. And um, unfortunately, one set came with, uh, one of these came with hardware and one of them didn't. So I'm gonna reuse the set of hardware on the driver's side. Um, if you've got them where they're not aligned, uh, this is the wheel. Um, just, you know, throw everything all over the floor and grab a pair of pliers. And this should just twist. It shouldn't be a big deal. Famous last words. All right, well, it'll fix when we put it together. So anyway, I'm gonna get this in there. Um, I gotta find the pieces that flew all over the fucking floor. Oh, there they are. So, again, this is really not that big of a deal. You just slide this over, leave it loose until you're done. Washer with the large part up. that goes that way or not. Actually, I think this does go down here. And then that goes like this. Because these are what grab the um, the frame or the, yeah, the mount. Anyway, let's get it installed. All right, so first things first is you're gonna compress down your shock and then you're just gonna pop it in here. Now, these are rated for a two and a half to three and a half inch lift, so they are much smaller. Uh, that doesn't look right though. It doesn't look right in the least. So let me see what the hell I got going on here. I should have more, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I shouldn't. Let me look at some. I don't have a whole lot of rod exposed, so I wanna make sure my shocks don't bottom out. And it looks like they're gonna bottom out well before the springs. All right, unfortunately, um, the front ones are for a three and a half inch lift and I actually have a two and a half inch lift which is compressed to about two inches. Uh, my official position is that the Rough Country lift is probably a piece of shit and needs to be replaced, but that's not a today project. So what I've done is I have I'm returning the RS55255s. Fortunately, Rock Auto has a great return policy. And I'm ordering the, the 239s, which are for a two and a half inch lift. And I've looked at the measurements enough, they should work. So I'm gonna put the piece of shit country uh, shock back in. I actually don't think the shocks are what's bad. Um, after doing some more research, um, I think it's just shitty springs. So uh, I eventually want to put a metal cloak kit in, but that's not a today project. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and change the shocks and get to a known set of decent shocks. Um, and then I'm going to plan out what the end state of the suspension needs to look like. So not very exciting, but 
these things happen um, and it's better to stop when you realize you have the wrong part than it is to continue. So I am going to put the rear ones in. So I'm going to put the rough country or the piece of shit country shock back in and then I'm going to move to the back and I'm going to put the rear ranchos in. Uh, I don't really expect those to solve my problem. Um, so let me get these boxed up and uh, run them up to FedEx and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, let's get this thing put back together and get to working on the rear end of it. So uh, let me clip the camera. All right, so you need to compress the shock in order to put it back in. Easiest way to do it is to turn it upside down and just put your weight on it. Okay, that's gonna turn it upside, that will give you enough time to get it in there. So I can't do all of that on camera, so you saw how I compressed it. Now I'm gonna get busy with it and get it stuck in here. Hopefully I can move fast enough and the camera won't be too much in my way. But that would be wishful thinking. So the other thing you can do is crawl under here and do it. And this may be easier sometimes. Oh, we need the stupid rubber stuff. course all that shit is up on top of the Jeep. God I hate these shocks. So there's that and next you need to get these bolts started so I'm down here I might as well do it there we go I'm gonna add a little bit of locked thread lock get out of the habit of calling it Loctite And then I'm just gonna work these by hand as best I can till they start to bind and that's when I'll get a wrench on them. Um, these are only going in temporarily. Uh, I've got replacements coming in a few days, so this is going to get tightened um, to uh, Brian's torque, which is basically what the torque that I think is appropriate. Interesting. I thought I saw a drop or something. 
did. Well, the only thing up there is the fucking windshield wiper fluid. <laughs> and we already know that pump's shot, so... Yeah, whatever. So let's work on the upper one now. Okay, so first things first, it's the stupid little rubber donut. Well, actually, now nah, it's the stupid little rubber donut. And the washer. And then the nut. And in this particular case, I'm not going to put thread lock on here because um, if it gets loose, it's not going anywhere. And again, it's only going to be for a few days. Today. That's good enough. All right, so let's go work on the back. But first, we gotta move the Jeep forward. So I need to move the Jeep forward to give myself space to work in back of it. Um, I'm just gonna push it. I don't feel like starting it. Uh, I know I've got a crap battery in it. Leaves me a lot of space in the back. All right. So this part is relatively easy to get to. This part up here, only a sadist could appreciate. So looks like 13 millimeter. Uh, let's see what these are. 14. Nope, that's a 15. All right, so we're going to start at the top. Uh, let me get the camera positioned. All right, so again, I think these are 13s. It is, it is, it is. Uh, I'm going to get a longer extension. I'm just not going to fight with it like this. I'll be right back. Okay, so and of course, Murphy's Law is that the camera is right where I need to put the fucking extension. Well, yes, of course it is. Wow. I 
heard that these were a pain in the ass. Let me get a six point. So, um, I'm going to use an impact wrench, which may turn out to be a bad idea, but we'll see. Piece of shit. Um, yeah, the impact wrench is probably the only way you're gonna get that out of there. Because this spot is designed uh, by a corrosion engineer. I need a different size uh, extension. I'll be right back. Alright, so let's see if we can get up into this one. No, this one's going to be a pain in the ass. get uh, something longer. So I want to use, I want to do this by hand now. The torque wrench just can't put enough force on it, so I'm going to use a torque wrench as a breaker bar. Let's see what the front one is. Okay, so this side is three quarter on my vehicle, and um, the other one is five eighths. And they're both stuck like Chuck. <clears throat> Let me get a breaker bar. Before we go to a breaker bar, There we go. Yeah, I spin it the wrong way. All right, so this one should come just right out. Ha ha, will do. Yeah, that's what you thought. <laughs> Fuck you. Shit country. Come on. There it goes. Alright, I'll be right back with another one. Alright, so uh fuck this camera mount. Um the uh old shocks are so worn out that they just uh came right out. No big deal. Uh they they couldn't even move them. So they definitely need to be replaced. These move nice and smoothly, and the bushing's not worn out, so it fits. All right, there it is. Circle back that in a minute. 
so. Sorry guys, I'm on. Fuck. I'm trying to turn the screen on on my GoPro so I can see what it's aimed at. Alright, I'm going to get it situated and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm not going to promise that I can keep it like this, but I'll try. You know, I am going to put some anti-seize on these because I, I have a bad feeling about these uh, bolts. So, be right back. So I'm going to point out that it takes very little anti-seize for it to do its magic. Talk about things that aren't designed to be worked on. I mean, you know, just fuck maintenance. I want to be a Jeep engineer. That way I don't ever have to design anything to be worked on. And nobody will give a shit if it breaks. So I think both of those are in. So at this point, I'm gonna stop spreading anti-seize. And let's see if we can figure out. Oh yeah, it was a thirteen. So we'll just do this by hand at first. That's good. So, just couldn't tell if it was in there properly. Brian tight um, 
which is just with a hand ratchet. Good, that's uh sorry I'm having camera um, out difficulties today. Okay, now did that socket go? Well, got this one. Oh yeah, the socket's still there. So I'm gonna go get a uh, pair of box wrenches and I'll double check the tightness on this. All right, so. Yeah, they feel good. All right, to the other side. All right, so I'm gonna work this one a little different. exhaust side uh, access is a little better over here so we're going to start with uh, the torque wrench breaker bar and now I'm going to use the power tool to get them out. comes out and then we'll pry the, uh, again I'm having camera mount problems today I'll be right back all right so now we're just gonna reverse the process Oh, 
Okay. So, I had this bright idea that thread one of these in. All right, I gotta turn the shock over because it's it's angled and I don't feel like fighting with the with that uh, cross piece there. Well isn't that special? That puts the stupid sticker outside. So everybody can see you are running ranchos. Okay, I don't know if that was any easier, but that's how we did that one. So I'm going to check the tightness with a hand, uh, hand ratchet. Got to be kidding me. Oh, fucking kidding me. Uh, I just either, I just broke an exhaust hanger or realized the exhaust hanger was already broken. already broken so I'll get another one of these it's not a big deal that's that's a pretty easy piece of hardware to find I hope and I apologize for the camera angle again I'm having issues with the camera mount that I use it's uh it's got a broken segment and that's making it difficult to get the camera exactly where I want it That completes that. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, installing the rear shocks and uh, not installing the front ones. And there'll be a part two for this when I get the front ones in. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye bye.